The most important thing you need to know about Chinese characters is that they are not, in fact, totally random squiggles. When you start learning Chinese characters, every character looks as if it's unrelated to all of the others. Each one looks unique. You learn character after character by forced rote memorization, becoming more and more exasperated and thinking, why are Chinese characters so difficult? You might say to yourself, how is it possible to learn thousands of characters? They all look totally different. After a while, maybe a few months, you're going to start to notice patterns. Oh wait, this one looks a bit like that other character I learned last week. You come to a realization that each and every character is not random, but instead there's some kind of logic involved. Unfortunately, getting to this point often takes months, if not years, and a lot of people end up giving up learning Chinese characters before they get to this point. Instead, they join the ranks of learners who decide that Chinese is too hard. Because they failed to get into Chinese characters properly, they defend their failure by blaming it on the Chinese characters being too hard. It has nothing to do with them, obviously. We are going to learn the characters a better way. I'm going to use these knowledge videos in order to give you insight into how the Chinese characters actually work. Normally it would take months, if not years, to realize these patterns, but we'll be shortcutting them by me teaching you the ideas in your very first week of learning the Chinese characters. So the big aha right now is that Chinese characters are not random. They're are patterns, there are rules that you can learn to unlock the meaning and also the pronunciation of Chinese characters. Let's go ahead and look at our characters from the first video, um, the characters Ni Hao, which means hello. First up is Ni. Look closely and you can see that there are actually two pieces or components inside of Ni. There's a very thin dividing line between the left half and the right half of the character. Um, I'm going to blow it up here so you can see it a little more easily. Okay, so what? Well, each of these two pieces has its own meaning and its own pronunciation. In fact, most of the time these pieces are also characters. Chinese makes new characters by stacking together existing characters. In the case of Ni, on the left we have Ren, uh, which has the meaning of person, and on the right we have R, which has the meaning thou. It's like an archaic way of saying you. By putting these together, um, person plus thou, we get the character Ni, which has the meaning you. Okay, what about Hao, uh, the character for good that we learned in our last video? On the left we have Nü, and on the right we have Zi. The piece on the left is the character for woman in Chinese, and the piece on the right is the character for child. So in this case we have woman plus child equals good. Within this character, the ancient Chinese scribes are actually telling us a story we're getting an insight into ancient Chinese culture. In this case, the very concept of goodness is defined by a man plus a child together. This is culturally seen as a good thing, perhaps because it represents a good state for a traditional Chinese family several thousand years ago. Okay, so what, you might be asking. The big news here is that there are only around 200 of these pieces in all of Chinese. To be precise, there are 214 of these pieces. We've already seen the pieces for person, for thou, for woman, and for child. So you've already been introduced to four of the 214. So instead of every character being random, they're instead made up of these exact same 214 pieces. Once you start to recognize these pieces, you can make sense of the characters. Until then, each character looks unique. More than that though, the pieces inside a character can give us hints about the meaning of the character and how to pronounce it. 
Day one is not the place to go into this, but very briefly, this means that by learning the meaning and the pronunciation of these 200 or so pieces, we have clues to the meaning and pronunciation of every single Chinese character. We can guess the meaning and even the pronunciation of unknown Chinese characters using this knowledge. This is a skill used by native Chinese speakers when they encounter a new character, but it's only used by advanced foreign students of Chinese despite the power of the technique. Again, this is not the place to go into depth. I've given an article below this video which has all of the basic information and I go into this in a lot more depth for about an hour or two in the Sensible Chinese Character course. For now, what you need to know is that Chinese characters are not unique. Each character is made up of pieces and there are only around 200 of these pieces in existence. If you learn these 200 pieces, you unlock the ability to recognize what every single Chinese character is made up of. And knowing the meaning of pronunciation of these pieces gives you clues into the meaning and pronunciation of the character.